I'd like to welcome everybody to the ribbon cutting ceremony today. Um, the ribbon cutting ceremony represents about two years of commitment of the Department of Natural Resources and the uh, public and private partnerships that have made this area for your choice and choosing available. It's the culmination of hard work, grant seeking, and partnerships with the Friends of Pierre Marquette State Park Foundation and the Illinois Climbing Association. Um, on top of that, the volunteers and members of those organizations have put in countless hours. And, and for that, I'd like to welcome you and thank you all in the same breath. It's important that the constituents are passionate and professional advocates of the sport in which they love. Their research, knowledge, expertise, and sweat equity that the team and volunteers have put into this project have been insurmountable. The climbing venue is a place that the department hopes that the climbing community can frequent, enjoy, and be proud of. Not without <coughs> saying that without the support of my supervisors in Springfield and the support from the climbing community is, is why we're taking on new projects. We have the resource. What we're short on in, in today's climate is money and staff. So without those associations and organizations, thank you. I can't express how cool it is for the climbing community. In particular, the climbers from St. Louis, uh, there are a large uh, batch of climbers from that area enough to support four indoor climbing gyms that are now in the greater St. Louis area. So it's quite remarkable that uh, what this area represents for the climbing community. Um, next I'd like to have Anita Rose um, come up. She's she's kind of the backbone of our, our friends of Pierre Marquette State Park Foundation. Um, I want to thank all of you for coming, especially those of you from IDNR. It's nice to have you here. We always like to show our park off. Uh, we think we've got the best park in the state of Illinois. We've also got the best uh, staff. We, we know it's the best park. That, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but no, they've been very dedicated, and it's been, with the things that are going on in the state of Illinois, it's been tough around here. But they've remained steadfast and kept this park open and for all of us to enjoy it. I know this morning I pulled into the visitor center and there's a busload of kids ready for a hike and they were all excited. Those are the kind of things that really make you feel good about the park. But, uh, what I'd like to highlight uh, and that's very important for the department um, is when we can do something like this in the challenging times that we face um, because we have partners on all sides of this uh, project that help. Uh, we have the park, the Friends Group uh, steps up and helps us find uh, financial support for it. The climbers uh, help us identify the routes, identify the equipment we need, help us put in all of the equipment. In the end, we end up with a safer opportunity for uh, recreation and the ability to enjoy this fantastic state park. Um, so as climbers, we love what we do and we're willing to go to great lengths to do it. But then there's the other side. Climbers aren't welcome everywhere. We know this. Every day there's, there's climbing access is threatened everywhere. That's why people like myself and many of the others out here, you know, we're, we're aware of this and, and we've banded <coughs> together and we've, we've, we've worked to, to create uh, organizations that they want to work with land managers to conserve these great resources. The local Illinois Climbers Association, or the local Illinois Climbers Organization, is the Illinois Climbers Association. Uh, since 1991, we've done our best to work with and for land managers to help explain why we climb and volunteer to show what we as a group can do. Notably, last spring, we worked with the superintendent of Giant City two in one day, build a 36 foot long elevated walking path, remove all graffiti, build a retaining wall, and remove all trash from one whole area of the park. But more recently, we've had the pleasure of working with Mr. Chris Hespin here at Pear Marquette to develop the region's next great climbing destination. This park will have the distinction of being the closest climbing area to the citizens of St. Louis. And what, when Chris kind of started the day today, he talked about some things that were very core to the root of tourism. Uh, the intrinsic qualities on which we base the entire promotion include things like natural, scenic, recreational, archeological, historic, and cultural. 
all those things combined come together right here in this place, uh, Pier Marquette State Park. And all of it, with tourism lens, can be translated into new dollars that support our local communities. There have been some references to the, those dollar amounts, and it's a fact that when people come to town, they do bring their money. So we're, we're excited about that. I talked to the gentleman out here in the audience, and you referenced it as well. But uh, through research, we're able to tell about how much money each visitor brings. So $130 per night per person is spent uh, when they come to the area. Uh, so that's uh, it's, 